Hello guys, you're welcome to One Call Reaction. My name is Sliman. So today I'm going to watch a video of uh, Dr. Nice Saki, where a Christian sister asked him a question. So let's quickly dive into this video. After that, I'm going to let you know my opinion based on uh, scriptural data concerning this matter. Let's quickly dive into the video. Um, my name's Tanya. I work for Cisco. Uh, I'm not here to disagree with anything, but I've always had a lot of people, especially Muslims, well, not a lot of people, just Muslims, always telling me, because you're a Catholic, you're going to go to Jahannam, but we're Muslims, you need to convert and you will go to heaven. According to me, I'm a good Catholic. I try to be a good Catholic. I don't intentionally commit sin. But does that mean because I'm a Catholic, I'm going to go to hell? And if I'm a Muslim, I'm going to go to heaven? Sister asked a question that many of her Muslim friends say, because she's a Catholic, because she's a Christian, she will go to hell. That is it true that because she's a Christian, you'll go to hell? Sister, according to me, if you're a true Christian, if you truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, inshallah, you shall go to Jannah. But, but if you truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, seek ye the truth and the truth shall free you. Correct? Now, what you are following, I don't know. Are you following your church or are you following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? If you are following your church, the chances of going to Jannah is very high. If you are following Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, inshallah, inshallah, you shall go to Jannah. Now, if you read the Bible, there are sayings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I don't know how much you are well versed with the Bible. Now, all the sayings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, are in red letter. Are in red, red letter. Yeah. Sister, do you believe Jesus to be God? Well, I'm a bit confused about that, so I'm not going to get into that. No, but I'm I asking just... yes or no. Well, confused God. No, it's, it's not confusion, but I don't want to answer something I don't know. And it's not funny. I'm not saying it's you know or not. Sister, I'm not saying you know or not. What do you believe I'm asking? No, I do believe he's God. Yes, yes I that's do. it. I'm not saying yes. what you know. You may not I be do. able to prove it. Yeah, Fine. I do. Sister, I'll tell you one thing. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. Yes. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind lepers with God's permission. The Christians and the Muslims, they are going together. But one may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is, sister, that most of the Christians, almost all, they believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is Almighty God. They believe he claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement. There is not a single unambiguous statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says worship me. Sister, if you can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement, anywhere from the Bible, in which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. In fact, if you read the Bible... I'm not talking about you accepting I'll come to it. or not. I'm I, not. I got my answer. Already. I'm giving you... Yes. I'm, I, I got my answer. You got half the answer. I'm giving the complete answer, okay. Insha. You can go ahead. You got half the answer. Okay. I told you that if you're a true Christian, you should go to Jannah. Yes. You don't know what a true Christian is. I'm giving you information about what true Christian is. Okay. If you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devils with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God cast out devils. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God is a Muslim. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, submitted his will to God. He was a Muslim. He never said he was God. It's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 24. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that the words that you hear are not mine, but my Father's who has sent me. And it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. 
Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you are witness to it. So Jesus Christ is a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you are witness to it. So from the Bible, you come to know that Jesus Christ was one of the most beloved messengers of Almighty God. We love him. We respect him. Do we follow his teachings? If you compare what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Bible, I told that yesterday that we Muslims, we follow more of the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of Luke, he was circumcised on the eighth day. We Muslims are circumcised, most of the Christians are. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, you have to follow each and every law. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17. Everything of the Old Testament, you can't break one law or dot or a tittle. As I mentioned in my speech, it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 8, in the book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2 to 5, and the book of Leviticus chapter number 11, verse number 7 to 8, that you should not have pork. We Muslims don't have pork, but most of the Christians have pork. It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 18, book of Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 1, you should not have alcohol. Muslims don't have alcohol, but Christians have alcohol. So if Christian means a person, who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, then we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. So if you become a true Christian and truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I go, shall I send him? It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that here shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Verbatim quotation from the Bible, King James Version. So Jesus Christ is prophesying about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you're a true Christian, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you're a true Christian, you'll believe in Prophet Muhammad, and inshallah, you shall go to Jannah. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. That is a, a good one from uh, Dr. Sai. And... Uh, let me just make some few comments based on available uh, scriptural data. The first thing here is uh, it's talking about the sister if she believes in the divinity of Christ. Of course, according to scriptural data, the divinity of Christ is well established in the scripture. And when Christian scholar talks about the divinity of Christ, they talk about Christ having the same being, having the same nature, having the same essence as the as the Father. I mean, the doctrine of Trinity, as we know it, talking about the divinity of Christ, is a well-established uh, biblical doctrine, which is based on the scripture. So let me just put a few scriptures for you guys. You will check the book of Exodus chapter 3, 14 to 17, where God introduced himself to you. Moses, he said, if they ask you who I have sent you, say, I am that I am. That was all God told Moses. And if you move forward now in the days of Jesus Christ, if you look at the book of John chapter 8, verse 58, uh, he said that before Abraham was, I am the same way that Yahweh introduced himself to Moses is the same way Christ referred to himself. That is the greatest claim. I am, I am. He is the one. He is the one that has the same essence with the Father, same nature, same being with the Father, and is a perfect representation of the Father. He is the only physical image of the Father that we have. And other places, we have many places in the scriptures that talk about the divinity of Christ. If you also look at the book of John 10, Verse 30, I am the Father, are one. If we look at this same book of John chapter 14, from verse 7 to verse 10, where he was having a conversation with his disciples, he said that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, because he is the full embodiment of the Father. He has the Father's nature, he has the Father's essence, and he has the Father's 
pain. Also, if we move further, if we look at uh, the book of Mark chapter 14, 61 to 67, we are going to see where it claimed that he is the son of man, which is a direct reference to the book of Daniel chapter 7, 14 to 15. Same thing, if we move forward, we can also find other biblical evidence where his early disciple called him God. In John 20, 27, of course, Thomas called him my Lord, uh, my God. And the term my Lord also was used to refer to Yahweh in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 10 to 12, Isaiah 35, verses to 8. These are the places. And also, if you move forward, you can see him being called God overall in Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Same thing in Titus 3, verse 14. He was referred to as God. So, even in Colossians chapter 1, for for of him and dream where all things be. There is a full representation of Colossians 1, 16, 17. We have the evidence there also. Same thing in the book of Revelation. So, guys, the divinity of Christ is well established. And some of the verses where he quoted, like uh, John uh, 14, John 16, where Jesus said, The Father is greater than I. That is where understood in the context of the Father being the first that introduced himself to the children of Israel before Jesus came to introduce himself also as God. So when we talk about the greater, it's about the role that each of them play in the account of uh, salvation. So we call it the economic trinity model. The son is became son when he came to this earth to redeem us from our sin. That is the, the account through which he became son. So guys, I hope you learn one or two things. Please keep on subscribing. Turn on your notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you. Have a lovely time on this channel.